In this video, I'll be building a combustion-powered vortex cannon that can fire a ring of air at extreme speed and with significant impact at range. A fog machine makes the rings visible to the camera. The most difficult part of building a high-powered vortex cannon is creating the barrel. It needs to be a long cone and very strong. Metal is too difficult to bend correctly and too heavy, so the next best option for material is fiberglass. To create a shape with fiberglass, you first need to have some sort of mold or former that the fiberglass can be spread over like paper mache and will support the weight while the resin cures. My first thought was to try window screen to roll a cone as a former. My reasoning was it would be relatively sturdy if rolled in several layers and would have plenty of texture for the fiberglass to stick to. It ended up being pretty hard to work with and I made the cone much too narrow, so I'm going to have to try this again. This time I'm going to roll a former out of thick painter's paper. I'll use multiple layers again to make it as sturdy as possible. According to some measurements that I've estimated from researching other large vortex cannons, I think the cone will work best with an angle of expansion somewhere between 10 to 15 degrees. Now this looks much better. I'm not sure why I hesitated to use paper in the first place. I'll use fiberglass sheets that I've cut into strips to cover this cone, starting from the bottom and working my way up. Hopefully by the time I reach the top, the base will have partially hardened and be helping to support the weight. Working with fiberglass resin can be a challenge. It begins to cure in about 10 minutes, so you only want to mix enough for a few sheets at a time. Switching gloves often so that resin doesn't have a chance to cure on your hands as you work will also make things go smoother. Each layer of fiberglass is overlapped as I work my way up the cone, so there are no weak seams. When the cannon is finished, the small end of this cone will be supporting the weight of the whole thing, so it should get a few more layers for added strength. Finally, I'll add a second layer to the entire cone, and that should make it plenty strong. A little warmth will help cure the resin faster. It was the middle of the night and cold out when I filmed this. In the meantime, I'll work on the cannon that will supply the burst of air to fire a vortex from this cone. A powerful pneumatic cannon would do the job, but some initial tests showed it takes a larger volume of air to create a vortex than any of my air cannons are capable of. Instead, I'll build a large chamber to power the cannon via combustion. A length of 4-inch pipe will be the body, with a threaded coupling on one side and a reducer on the other. Two self-tapping screws will be the ignition terminals for the cannon, with a piezoelectric barbecue igniter providing a spark. A clean-out cap will provide easy access for fuel and fresh air between shots. The cone will mount with a 1.5 inch PVC coupling. Now that the resin has had time to cure, I can trim off the top of the cone so it transitions to the fitting smoothly. I'll use sandpaper to rough up the outside of both items and a few strips of fiberglass wrapped around the joint to turn the two pieces into one. After a little more cure time, the vortex cone can attach to the chamber I've made by slipping over a short length of inch and a half pipe that has been glued into the chamber's reducer. The cannon is fired with flammable aerosol spray in the same way as a classic potato gun. I use a thin plastic film pressed between the barrel and the chamber to act as a burst disc for more powerful shots. A burst disc allows the combustion to reach a higher pressure before punching through and accelerating the vortex down the barrel. This can make for an impressive result. Some of the lighting for the slow motion shots in this video was created with a Thru-Night TN36 flashlight. Thru-Night seems to be outdoing themselves continuously with how bright their flashlights can get. The TN36 produces over 6,500 lumens in a wide beam pattern to light a very large area. 
I only used its lower settings while filming the Vortex Cannon, or it would have easily overpowered my 1500 watt video lights. Thrunite has been one of my sponsors for a while now. Having used many of their flashlights over the last year, I can say they definitely give the best value I've seen for top shelf flashlights. You can check them out through links in the video description and at thrunite.com. If you enjoyed this video, you can subscribe for more on my YouTube channel, Nighthawk in Light. Thanks for watching.